Sega Woods, what's up, bro? What's happening, dude? You all right? I'm good, I'm good. Good um, to be here, man. Yeah, good man, it's good to have you here. If it's cool with you, I just want to give a little history. Please, as to how please, we, please. As to how we met, because I think it's interesting. But be nice, though, man. Don't, don't. Absolutely, bro, yeah, absolutely. <laughs> but um, in most cases, you wouldn't find a gentleman like yourself and me occupying the same space, nope. you know, let alone having a conversation. Nope, absolutely not. And, uh, but here we are right now, so I believe that some sort of history, yeah. you know, is being made today. But it's interesting, you know, I met you on Twitter, yeah. um, and, and we both meet people on Twitter and Facebook all the time, <laughs> you know. Sometimes you got to ask yourself what will compel a person yeah. to take it a step further, to, right. to really right. get to know someone. And right. so, of course, I, I just think it's funny how we met because, you know, one Sunday morning, you know, I'm just checking my Twitter timeline yeah. Yeah. like normal. Yeah. Yeah. And I see this message and it says, I think this is it. Yeah. So, you know, that's an odd way yeah. to start a message. And yeah. it said, I think this is it. And then it had my Twitter. Right. So I'm like, OK, who are you? Like, what are you doing? Right. So I, I click that message and realized that a person was having a conversation with you yep. based off something you said, mm -hmm. which was based off something I said on the broadcast. Absolutely. And so, you know, you you you, you kind of hinted toward, you know, I can't believe the people are eating up this foolishness. You know, mm -hmm. somebody give mm -hmm. me this clown's <laughs> Twitter address. Yeah, I said that. And so, and so um, <laughs> you know, for me, I'm like, oh, okay, fighting words. Yeah, you you want to yeah, go there? Yeah, so yeah. so I proceeded so. to just, I tweeted you. Mm -hmm. Wasn't too long before you tweeted me back. Yep. And I'm like, matter of fact, I kept looking at my phone like, all right, He's gonna respond, and it's about to go down. Yep. And 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 then you you show up with the whole walking in love attitude, the whole <laughs> peace and, and and grace, and I'm like, what what is this? We supposed to be fighting right now? But see, I'd be surprised because most people won't, won't, wouldn't even agree that you were saying that I was walking in love and grace. But that's another show for another time. Right, right, right. <laughs> yeah. But but nevertheless, you know, we started talking then. Yeah. Uh, you know, on you know, tweeting a little bit. Um, you established that it was me. Mm -hmm. And, um, and then we talked about, you know, I gave you my number. We yep. talked about coming on the show, and the rest is pretty much history. Yeah. I think for me, man, the, um, the surprise was throughout all of that, you were open to have a conversation. And, and for, for the most part, man, that's, that's not most, most cats of, of, uh, of your status uh, uh, in the body of Christ and as a whole would not even give cats like me the time of day. And trust me, I've, I've reached out to other people before, maybe not as, as hard as I did with you. But uh, nonetheless, wouldn't even give you the opportunity. And I, I know a lot of people, man, like that. So, you know, the fact that I'm here sitting and talking to you and we're able to deal with this, you know, these, these issues or just, just the issues of discussion, whatever the case might be, I think it's a blessing. And I appreciate, man, you even reaching out to me. And we are, we're sitting here talking. Yeah, well, you know, on my end, it's rare to find someone like you that wants to do more than argue, you know, mm -hmm. or wants to do more than, than, than have a theological debate. And so you were very relational, you were very uh, personable. And so that I appreciated. And I think that's part of the reason that I felt like, you know what, let me go on this cat show. And then and, and we talked yeah. for quite a bit before <clears throat> right. we even got on the show. Right. So now we just, we're getting to know each other, like even mm -hmm. outside of the scripture, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. you know, finding out that, that, you know, that we're both married and that we both have kids and right. all those things, you know, right. I just, right. it felt a little more genuine. Yeah. You know, we're here because we want to talk about some um, biblical subject matter and, yeah. and, we're from two different camps, and yeah. I, neither one of neither one of us really even cares to use that word. Exactly. It's just that when people hear you, when people hear me, they're going to typecast us immediately and say, exactly. "Oh yeah, that, oh, he's reformist. Oh, oh, he's word of faith." Exactly. Et cetera. But we want to just talk about some of the beliefs that you know come out of our camps. Yeah. Um, see if there's places we agree, places we disagree. What our views on the essentials? Yep. You know, that's what this absolutely is about, and absolutely. I'm really excited to you know have this conversation. Absolutely. So. One of the questions I wanted to to ask was, you know, what what's the goal? You know, what what do you want to uh, gain from this? What is the, what is the objective for for both of us? You know, meeting. I mean, we we planned this for about a month and a half now. Uh, I know my mind has been, you know, kind of like, you know, what's what what do I seek to attain? Do I want to, you know, build a, a a stronger friendship with this cat? Do I want to embrace him even more? Do I consider him as a brother? I, just for right now, I consider you as a brother. Now, me saying that already is drawing fire. Right. But I told you that on my show yeah. that I considered you a brother in Christ. Yeah. Um, although the, uh, the 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 uh, the theological title of Word of Faith, you know, uh, at the at the core is where we differ. Uh, on, but I could not, in my own conscience and mind, say that you're not a brother in Christ until proven otherwise, based, based on either what you teach or what you do. So, um, my my desire, I guess, or, or question is, what what is your goal? What do you seek to to gain from from us from us talking? Clarity, for the most part, you okay. know. Um, 
there are those that, you know, from from your camp, or similar to your camp, that yep. would that would look at me and say, oh no, that's different Jesus, different gospel. Mm -hmm. That you know, that's not the Bible. And you know, I can't change everybody's mind. Right. But I want to establish the fact that no, we we not over here at Crenshaw okay. Christian Center. Now maybe somewhere else. Okay. I said, but here. We don't preach a different Jesus. We okay. preach the Jesus of the Bible. It's just not a different gospel. It's the gospel of the Lord Jesus Christ. So, you know, I want to establish that and, um, you know, let the world see that first off, two brothers in the body of Christ mm -hmm. from different camps mm -hmm. can actually come together and establish, hey, okay, we may have some disagreements, okay. but I don't look at you and say, nah, you ain't saved or nah, you, 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 different Jesus, different okay. gospel, different faith. We're not in the same family. We're not in the same body. Right. right. I, from what I've dealt with you personally, I can't say that, and I'm right. pretty sure the relationship is gonna is gonna blossom. Absolutely. You know, from here on out. Absolutely. I consider you a brother as well. So. Same here. Same here. At the end of the day, it's gonna be a lot. I think uh, both of us are gonna be uh, willing to have to say, okay, I want to let this go for the sake of the gospel, or for the sake of the cross, because it's more than just about titles and names. When it, when it comes to Word of Faith and when it comes to the, the teachings of Word of Faith, explain for those who may be watching this, what do you believe when it comes to this book, the Bible? Do you believe that it is the inspired and inerrant Word of God in its original autographs? Do you believe that we as Christians ought to get our understanding and our teaching from this? Or is there something that we basically have to say, okay, well, you know, I don't want to talk about that because that may create uh, disunity. Or do you hold to this as being the final authority? And see, and that's a good question. And this is where the confusion comes with me. Mm -hmm. Absolutely, I consider that the final authority. So what has occurred in the past or what has taken place mm -hmm. to cause other individuals to say, we don't consider or, or for a Price Jr. doesn't consider that the final authority? I think, I think for the most part, and we you know, would probably say, um, you know, guilty by association, depending on who you associate with, from the outside looking in, people say, well, you know what, you know, if he run with this cat, he run with that person, and th this, that, and the other, then automatically this dude is bad company. Okay, but even with that, these other cats, it, if I'm running with some other cats, mm -hmm. what about those individuals? Has, what have they done or what, what have they said? What would lead anyone to believe they're not of the fold, mm -hmm. that they're not of the kingdom? And I, I would probably say depending on what they teach. Um, uh, say, for instance, you know, if, if I said that uh, Jesus Christ wasn't God, okay, in, in other words, uh, I had a modalistic or oneness Pentecostal uh, belief to it. Right. And, 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 and what I think will be a problem is if, if I knew that you were running with cats like Jake's uh, that denies the Trinity, mm -hmm. uh, that doesn't believe that, 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 that you know, that uh, Jesus Christ and God and the Holy Spirit are three separate co-eternal, co-equal co persons. Uh, they're not coming uh, in manifestations. Or you see what I'm saying? Right. Yeah. So right. um, if if I knew that that you were running with, you know, cash like that, you weren't trying to reach out to them and say, hey, your view on the deity of Christ or your view on the Trinity, even though the word Trinity is not in the Bible, but hello, the word Bible ain't in the Bible. All right. So I want to go there with that. Exactly. Um, how how would you be how would you perceive how would you be seen and and I I, I mean look man I've been I've been perceived a lot negatively yeah. more than positively right I think the problem comes when we don't sit down and talk like this this is where a lot of accusations come right. this is where a lot of uh, statements can be taken out of context um, I'm 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 of one that wanted to be a Berean I want to check and make sure that what this person has said is what he's saying in context and if it's not I want to raise questions right. to that individual as much as I possibly can yeah. so. Um, I think some of that comes from that as well, too. Yeah. So if, if I'm running around with other people that, uh, like, for instance, and, and it's just, it's just, I'm just going to have to dump right now. You and I had talked a while back. Creflo Dollar, Leroy Thompson. Right. Uh, uh, Leroy Thompson is the pastor out there in Louisiana. Uh, they had money just strewn all around the, the stage. Mm -hmm. And they're kicking up money, man, like it's leaves in the fall. Right. Uh, Creflo Dollar comes up, and he's dancing and kicking up money around, right. the, around the stage as well, too. Right. And I, and I had asked, I said, dude, now, these cats are word of faith. They, they're not reformed. Right. They, they word of faith. They're just talking mm -hmm. about the camps. What's up with this? Right. Is this what y'all do? I mean, exactly. because, you know, your man came over to y'all church. He, he, he preached at y'all church before. Indeed. So, you know, the Bible says bad company corrupts good character. Mm -hmm. how, how do you respond to that? Or, or has he been approached regarding that? Uh, what has his attitude 
you know, regarding that. So right. I think those things are kind of like will raise red flags right. and, and, and give you that may not hold to that a, 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 bad, a bad slap. I don't go out looking for what other ministers are doing. Right. You know, the only thing that I see is a broadcast on television, and that's only sometimes. Okay. So um, sometimes, you know, you may know someone in the body of Christ. Right. And they know this gentleman that I've heard of, but I've never met yet, but they're mm -hmm. vouching for them. Okay. You know, that's the, that could be a situation. I think there's another misconception that big churches are word of faith churches, you know, and I can name a, a number of big churches that right. are not right. word of faith churches. Exactly. I mean, John MacArthur is not word of faith. His church ain't small. Far from it. You know, <laughs> it, 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 and he's on television. Yeah, absolutely. You know, absolutely. so uh, like a Jake's, Jake's ain't word of faith. Mm. Nah. Yeah, yeah, no, yeah, no, yeah, no. Yeah. No, yeah, yeah he's he, not word of faith, yeah, bro. He is, one yeah. Miss Pentecostal, and, and that's the thing. One Miss Pentecostal d does not mean word of faith. But he's word of faith too. No, he's not. He, he believes. He might, but he might. Okay. He teaches too. He 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 what? He does teach what he does teach word of faith. Uh, he te he teaches that you can create your own reality by your words. Okay. He does that. Now, see, and some of those things <laughs> have been established as word of faith teachings. Okay, it's, well, break it down. Say, to, to, you know. Okay. Um, um, uh, or they've been established as a word of faith teachings as if others don't believe in it or, or, or others haven't taught it. See, to me, if, okay. you, if you teach a, a particular thing, that doesn't, that doesn't necessarily make you word of faith. What, 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 if, that, what if the, the pattern or the characteristic? As a matter of fact, you know what would be better? What's that? Is if you told me what would establish someone as a word of faith. Why? Because history has shown us that word of faith folk didn't call themselves word of faith. Well, Calvinists didn't call themselves Calvinists. Okay, so then, <laughs> so who right? So who has given who has given we these have orientations? Done that. We we have done that. We we but but we not those the labels. but not those within. Oh no! In other words, in other words, if you're the Calvinist right. and I'm the Word of Faith, right? You didn't call yourself a Calvinist. No, I you. called you a Calvinist. Yeah. And I didn't call myself Word of Faith. You called me Word of Faith. But depending on which kinds you're talking about, you got you got some diehard Calvinists that are proud of being Calvinists. You right. got some cats that are Word of Faith. They're proud of being involved in Word of Faith. They are. They are. Um, so I, you asked the question: What would what, what would I think Word of Faith is? Um, I think uh, E.W. Kenyon was the was the founder, I believe. Correct me wrong. He, he, no, he's he's been established as. Uh, he's been established. It's, as it's the been founder. misappropriated to Kenneth Hagin Sr. Yeah, I know, but, but I'm going back to the original. But it's source. Kenyon. Yeah, um, from from what my research has shown, uh, mind sciences, uh, um, Christian science, Scientology is pretty much where he got the majority of his 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 theology or teachings from. And it kind of like migrated over into Christianity uh, by taking passages of scriptures, uh, for the most part, out of context, um, or just basically saying that man has more authority by what he says than than, than God. Um, and I think f me on the outside, excuse me on the outside looking in, or uh, me studying theology or looking at uh, essential or orthodox teaching, that would be a problem mm -hmm. for, for me. I understand. And I think maybe for other people as well. So when we hear word of faith uh, and, and some of the teachings that it espouses, then it will raise some, some concern and some, and some red flag. Now, let me just say this. I do not believe that every person that's word of faith is not a believer. Right. I, I, do not, I do not believe that. I believe that there are people uh, within the word of faith that are born again believers. I think that the doctrine at its core is what is where the divide comes. Right. Um, because if, if, if man is, is sovereign and God isn't, or man well, creates man, his own destiny. Man could never be sovereign, though. Well, okay, and see, and it's interesting, <laughs> and it's, it's interesting that you that you that you mentioned that because yeah. uh, you made a statement over when you said deny, you know, if a person denies the deity of Christ, right? And I'm thinking, never in 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 my life have I heard anyone from my circle deny the deity of Christ, but maybe you have okay. heard someone supposedly from my circle okay. deny the deity of Christ. I think the reality is, or the facts are. You would have some concerns with mm -hmm. statements that mm -hmm. were made out of "quote unquote" word of faith camps, right? But see, I on the same side, absolutely, have had concerns, absolutely, um, that I've heard, you know, Calvinists say, and 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 you guys take a serious beating <laughs> for the whole <laughs> unconditional elect belief. Yeah, you know, I mean, let's talk about some of the concerns, you know, that, that that we both have. I think, well, I mean, I had, a, I had, I had one of the questions I... Uh, Excellent. Well, well what, what is the beef between Word of Faith and Reformed Theology? What's, what's the beef? What, you know, why is there 
uh, this this divide. Well, I don't know. Y'all started it. Wow, we started it. Let me think about that. Maybe not. Depending on what somebody said, it may, may, may have started us to respond on that. No uh, let me give you an example. No um, I, I, I heard Creflo Dollar say on, on a YouTube clip, and I, and I heard the context, because I, I, I hate snippets. I appreciate that. I, so so, I, so I, before I you even it. say it, Absolutely. you're one who checks context. Mm -hmm. Okay. I heard the snippet. I mean, excuse right. me. I heard the, 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 the clip mm -hmm. in context. It was not a snippet. He was talking about Christ being asleep on the boat. And he said that, that, that the Bible says that God doesn't sleep, no slumber. Mm -hmm. But Jesus is sleeping on the boat in the middle of the storm. Okay. God doesn't get tired, but Jesus was tired. Right. And I said, I said. So, so what dude, do you believe he was well, leading up to? Uh, Jesus in his humanity got tired. Right. Jesus in his humanity got hungry. Absolutely. Jesus in his humanity felt, felt pain. Absolutely. All of that. But Jesus Christ is fully God. Absolutely. Fully God. No 24 doubt. 7, even on holidays. Absolutely. So, hands down. When Creflo said that God don't sleep, but Jesus was sleeping. So you think he was alluding to something? I ain't gonna think. That, that's exactly what he, what, he, what he said, which brings a concern for me. Okay. Now, did he, what else did he, I mean, did, did he just flat out say? So, so congregation, based on what I'm saying, Jesus isn't God. Or, no, or, he didn't or, say it like that. Just like Jace wouldn't say, I don't believe in the Trinity. Okay. He'll say three manifestations of one God. Right. And then when you question. Instead of three persons. Or, instead of three persons. Or, right, right. Instead of bringing uh, 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 that statement into clarity, you want to leave it out there, but then when other people bring it to your attention, you don't want to answer it. Right, I feel you. Then what are you bringing people up to conclude? I feel you, no doubt. If you came and told me, uh, Seiko, are you married to your wife, Sharon? Well, define what you mean by married. You know, because married could be anything. Exactly. Yeah. Now, just tell me, dude, are you married to your wife? Did you make a covenant with this woman? Right. Are, you, are you with her in holy matrimony? Well, that's, not being, that's not being promoted for the most part. Right. Uh, what makes it different with you and why I find it more of a, a why I had to come here was because, because you are approachable mm -hmm. and because you were open to say, hey, this is what I believe. And if I'm wrong, then show me yeah. through the scriptures and vice versa for me. Yeah. I don't profess to know everything. I mean, I want to be right. I want to be right. To the best of my ability. So two yeah. cats here want to be right. Right. But there's there's there's, there's things around us. Right. That's putting both of us in a bad light. Yeah. So. Um, I think when it comes to this issue with, 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 the, with the Bible, with Christ, do you hold to the teachings that allegedly that Creflo said that Christ and God or Christ is not God because he was sleeping? Isaiah 9, 6. Talk to me. For unto us a child is born, mm -hmm. for unto us a son is given. And it did not say that the government will be on their shoulders. Absolutely. Said his shoulder. His shoulders. And his name will be. So the Who's his name? Jesus. Okay, I want to make sure we clear that up. Oh yeah. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. But it didn't say them. It, it, it said his. No, it didn't. No, no it I'm didn't. saying, yeah, yeah. It did not say right. that the government will I be agree. on their shoulders. Totally it did not agree. say that their name will be. His right. name will be. Right. So the child that's born and the son that's given, Jesus. Okay. A, a, a statement that references his his full divinity or deity yep. and humanity. Thank you. But that is not what's being pushed. I see. And that's what brings concerns with just with that issue in and of itself. Gotcha. I, I don't know if. Uh, 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 see, you've heard more than I have. That's 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 what's yeah, crazy. And, and see, that's see, what's crazy. And, 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 I, and I, I was up, dude, I, I'm telling you, I was not believing you when you told me, even with the whole Creflo and the Leroy Thompson. I said, dude, come on, man. I said, come on, dude, quit playing games. I know you have to have seen this video. You said, Doc, I haven't seen that. You know, you, you, you brought it to my attention. This is crazy. Now, people are going to be watching this video. Right. They're going to be watching this, 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 uh, this taping, man. Mm -hmm. And, you know, I'm not trying to pit you against anybody. Uh, you know, and the same thing for me. If, mm -hmm. if, if MacArthur or Piper or, or, or whoever says something that does not align with the scriptures, then here's what the Bible says. I, I, I caught heat because... Uh, I know somebody's going to probably disagree with it, but I'm going to say it because this is what I do. Right. Um, John MacArthur had made the comment about praying to the Holy Spirit. Mm -hmm. could, we, could we pray to the Holy Spirit? And he said, well, yeah, sure, you can because he's God. I disagree with that. Right. I disagree. Because of what the scripture specifically says. Yeah. Now, in my camp, 
off. Right. Because you touched they John McCarthy. They popped me off. They, you they touched John McCarthy. Okay, so right. so so do you see yeah, yeah. on both sides? Absolutely. We got our sacred cows. Yeah. And so I, I can see that the sky is green. And if I'm MacArthur, if I'm one of the ones that people love, well, the sky ain't green. The sky is blue from our right. vision. Right. But because of who you are, you mean to tell me you can't be wrong about things? Right. And so that's that's my concern. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, I'm I'm not here to try to pit you against people in your in your camp and vice versa. But right. Doc, if it's if it's if it's in print, if it's in writing, that's or if right. I say something, and right. Doc, I'm responsible for that. Indeed, I'm responsible for that. Indeed. So that that's my concern. I don't think that we can just broad brush and make comments or statements and saying that that is God's will for everybody to be rich, God's will for everybody to be healed, whatever the case might be. And I know there may be some a little bit of a difference with that, but I want us to kind of like either clarify, clarify yeah. it or just you know, you know, bring but, some light to it. But to me, where where is, you know, before we even get into yeah. details with that, if if you don't believe it and I do. Okay. But neither beliefs okay. take anything away okay. from who Christ is I feel that. and his lordship. Okay. My thing is, at the end of the day, can we just disagree on it? I, I say we can. Okay. I, I, I would say we can, if it does not affect the gospel. Okay. Here's what I'm saying. If I've, I've seen it happen where people are, are being told to bring money to the altar if sure. they want healing. Sure. Doc, I don't see that in the text. I, I, I understand what you're saying. And, and that's coming from Word of Faith. Right. That's coming from your camp. I don't know if that's coming from Word of Faith. Oh, it's coming from your camp, Doc. Now, here's why I say that. Okay, talk because, to me. Because what ends up happening is there are individuals okay. that may be from denominations that associate themselves with Word of Faith. A Word of Faith individual will invite someone from a denomination. They'll come into that Word of Faith church. They'll do something in that church. The pastor doesn't speak against it, so then it looks like it's all Word of Faith. But shouldn't he speak against it, though? Well, should, well, shouldn't he shut it down? No, 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 no. But if he's okay with it then he's okay with it. I'm saying, does that make it all word of faith? Oh, that, that, that's far as it, okay. that's just what I'm simply okay. saying. Okay, yeah. well, I, 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 would have to, I would have to, you know, I would have to, you know, concede on that one. Yeah. Um, but there lies the problem again because of the perception. And, and, and I'll agree with you that perception for most people, that's their truth. Yeah, uh, and, and so, truth. okay, so then you're saying, let me ask you this, what affects the gospel then? Because maybe from, from what I'm seeing, from the outside looking in, when, when you say his lordship or when you say um, uh, the character and nature of Christ, I'm, I'm more of it like just bottom line straight to the point. Mm -hmm. if, if, if I'm telling people that it's God's will for you as a believer to be totally healthy to and they're not. Then what does that do about the character and nature of Christ? Is, is he is okay. he lying, or I or is it because saying. is it because I don't have enough faith, Doc? I, I've been around people, I've been to hospitals, I've been I've I've, I've, I've seen people have had cancer, Doc. Got probably got more faith than all of us here in this room, and God, by His own purpose and plan, for whatever the reason it is, chooses not to do that. I mean, I think it's about to get interesting now. Oh yeah, you gotta you, be, brother. You know, but <laughs> you look at. Jesus gives a commission to his disciples. He says, go out, heal all manner of diseases. I give mm -hmm. you the authority to do that. Sure do. It. I mean, why would he do that if it wasn't his will? Well, you want to answer? Okay, you know, cast, cast out demons. You want my answer on that now? Yeah, you, sure. You, you talked to the disciples, first of all. Indeed, no doubt. The 12. The 12. Judas was included in that 12. The 12. Okay. Uh, the, the, the question comes, were all people in Jesus' day healed? when he himself was on, on, on the scene? That's a good question. I, 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 would, I would allude to one. In Mark chapter one, um, I was reading this and it, and it struck me, man, it hit me like a ton of bricks when I read this text. Now we know that, J, that we are we are established that Jesus Christ is God. We ain't gotta be darned, redundant with that. Not at all. Uh, multitudes is here in verse twenty nine. I'll just read it for those who maybe uh, listen to it. He says, and immediately after they had come out of the synagogue, they came to the house of Simon and Andrew with James and John. Now Simon's mother in law was lying sick with a fever, and immediately they spoke to him about her and came to her, and he came to her and raised her up, taking her by the hand, and the fever left her, and she waited, and she waited on them. The same passage you were talking about in Matthew 8, right? right. So Mark uh, also puts it in his gospel. Verse 32, it says, And when evening had come, after the sun had set, they began bringing to him all who were ill and those who were demon-possessed. Mm -hmm. And the whole city had gathered at the door. 
And he healed many who were ill with various diseases and casting out many demons. And he was not permitting the demons to speak because he knew who they, who he, they knew who he was. Verse 35 is where I'm hanging at it. All right. And then early the next morning, while it was still dark, he arose and went out and departed to a lonely place. And he was praying there. And Simon and his companions hunted for him. And they found him and said to him, everyone is looking for you. And he said to them, let us go somewhere else to the towns nearby in order that I may preach there also. For that is what I came out for. So my question is, you know, we know Jesus heals. We, we know he's a great physician. We know that. We right. know that. Right. But we see here in this text, it's just one example where he leaves knowing that people came to him for healing. Right. No mention of faith, no mention of a person's lack of faith or no faith at all. Jesus said, the purpose of why I came here is not to heal everybody. The purpose I came here was to preach the gospel. So my question would be, could I, could I in, in, in full confidence, say that, Fred, if you, if you are suffering with cancer, God wants you healed. God wants you well. He, he wants you restored. How do I know that? How do I know the mind of God? Deuteronomy 29, 29. It's a secret thing. I don't know everything that he would desire. What, what would you say? But, but wouldn't we say that, that we're holding the contract in our hand? We're, ho we're holding the covenant in our hand. Mm -hmm. Okay. So if there is a promise in the covenant, can I stand on that? Absolutely. Is that covenant promise for everybody? We know that there are different covenant promises too, right? Okay. Well, I'm talking about believers. I'm talking about those who call themselves Christians. Absolutely. Absolutely. I, I, would, say, I would say yes, but even with that, it's still qualified because let me give you an example. And we talked about this on the show before, before too. Uh, dealing with sickness, right? Mm -hmm. I think James five thirteen. Is any of you suffering? Right. What was the What was the remedy for that? If any of you are suffering, uh, uh, let them come forth. Let the elders of the church lay hands on them. Prior to that, prior to him calling him, he says, "Are, are you any of you suffering? Pray." That's it. He didn't say. I promise you, you're gonna be healed. He just says, are, is, "Is there any of you Christians, believer, in Jerusalem?" Is there any of you suffering? Pray. He, 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 didn't, he didn't say anything else. He said, any, any of you sick, let him call for the elders of the church, having, uh, laying hands on them, having known them in the name of the Lord. He gave that for those who are, he said, but any of you suffering? Scripture says in Acts, he, he went about healing the sick mm -hmm. and those who were oppressed of Satan. And I say, A to the man. I mean, in, I mean, <laughs> in, 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 I mean in that verse, he's attributing the, the sickness mm -hmm. to satanic oppression and saying Jesus went about healing people of that and okay. delivering them from that. I agree. Uh, he, he heals us from our diseases. Yes, he, he sent does. his word and healed them. Yes, he did. D delivers us from our destructions. Yes, yes, yes. And you already know, I believe God heals. I, absolutely. You already know, I, I, I know he heals because he healed me. Whether anybody would say that they don't believe it or not, I know God heals because his word tells it, me that. Is, is, it, is it possible okay. that that there could be something on our end as individuals that we're not doing. Like, like, let's go with the, the whole not enough faith okay. concept. Okay. Okay. Let's look at a, a Matthew nine twenty nine. To sure. me, to me, this this scripture really speaks volumes because I wonder why would Jesus make the statement that he makes here. Let's start with verse eighteen. Okay. Okay. While he spoke these things to, to them, behold, a ruler came. We know this is Jairus. Mm -hmm. Worshipped him, saying, "My daughter has just died." Right. Uh, I think in, in one gospel it says that. She's close to death right. by yeah. the time Jesus gets to her because he had the encounter with the woman. Exactly. By the time he gets to the house, the girl exactly. is dead. Yeah. Okay. So he says, my daughter's just died. Now, why, why would he say this? Why would the ruler say this? Why would Jairus say? It seems like, it seems like there's, a, there's, there's a degree of confidence here. Mm -hmm. My daughter's just died. But come yep. and lay your hand on her yep. and she will. Faith. She will live. Okay. Faith. We agree. We agree right Absolutely. there. So Jesus arose. He followed him. And so did his disciples. Mm -hmm. Suddenly a woman who had a flow of blood for 12 years. Mm -hmm. Now we know from, other, from, the, from the other uh, uh, gospel that she spent all she had. Yep. Uh, the physicians couldn't do anything. Yep. Yep. Okay. Um, she, she risked her life coming out mm -hmm. into public, mm -hmm. you know, having an issue of blood. Mm -hmm. She has a flow of blood for 12 years. She, she comes behind. She touches the hem of his garment. And she says to herself, if only I may touch his garment, mm -hmm. I shall. Mm -hmm. Kind of with that same confidence that Jairus Still had. Faith. Still, Still faith. faith. Yep. I, I shall be made well. Jesus turns around and, and when he sees her, he says, be of good cheer, daughter, mm -hmm. your faith. Mm -hmm. well, why would he make that statement? Your be faith. Because she applied the faith that, that she needed to get well. We established Jesus is the healer. Absolutely. So Absolutely. your faith. No argument for me. And the fact that Jesus is the healer. <laughs> no, no argument for me. 
Okay. So what was what was special about her faith? That I mean, I mean, aren't we dealt the measure of faith? Well, I, we we have different degrees of faith. Would you agree? We see it in scripture. Okay. So is it possible that that faith can be developed? Absolutely. Okay. But is it possible that God can still heal without faith? Well, now we're are we talking about gifts of healing and miracles now? No, 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 no. no. I'm just talking about I'm talking about the sovereignty of God. Okay. When so it comes this, to healing. Okay. Well, then this is probably where where we differ. <laughs> Okay. This is probably where we differ. <laughs> okay. I mean, I believe that when it comes to the gifts of the Spirit, uh -huh. Scripture says, as the Spirit wills. That's that's God. That's on God. But what part? What do you mean, what part? As the Spirit wills what? It says, as Somebody the Spirit giving wills. gifts? Those nine gifts. Yeah. They will manifest as He wills. Okay. But as does, the Spirit but does, wills. But does everybody and, and, have that? Oh, no, no. It's, just as, it's as He wills. Okay. Just bottom line, it's as He wills. So does everybody that has the gift of faith. Well, nobody has any of the gifts. I don't I don't own it. I don't own a gift. I don't own a gift of healing. You do have a gift. No, I don't own the gift of healing. I don't own it's miracles. Your, it's your gift. God gave it. I to have you. the Holy Spirit who gave you the gift. The gifts are his. And he gives it to you. According to first Corinthians 12. He manifests them through you or and me and it's as still, he wills. And it's still your gift. It's I'm, not, I'm not saying I'm not saying to be prideful. I'm saying it's, God, it's yours. It's mine. Yeah. So I can use it whenever. Uh, let me let me give an example. You're a pastor, right? OK. I think you have to get the teaching, don't you? But we're talking about the gifts of the Spirit. That's still a gift. No, no, we're talking about the gifts of the Spirit. That's a gift. No, we're talking about 1 Corinthians 12. I, I'm right there with you, bro. But teaching's not mentioned in that. 1 Corinthians 12? You talking about the end of the chapter? Because that's what you're talking about. I'm, 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 I'm going to go to 1 Corinthians 12. Talk, you're talking about the end of the chapter. I'm talking about 1 Corinthians 12, yeah. 8, 8, 9, and 10. What about it? Nine gifts are mentioned. What about, what about, what about 26 on down? That's not 8, 9, and 10. It's still a gift. Now you're talking about Ephesians 4.11. You're talking about Ephesians 4.11. Or you're talking about Romans 12. It's the, is it not a gift? But those are gifts that are, are listed By who? In, in three different categories. Who gives them? The scripture says in Ephesians that Jesus gave some to be. Absolutely. Gifts. Uh-huh. 1 Corinthians 12 says that these are the gifts of the Spirit. Right. Romans 12 doesn't say as clear as the other two. It, it's, been, it, it's, it's assumed in Pentecostal circles mm -hmm. that Romans 12 would be the gifts of the Father, that... Ephesians 4 would be the gifts of the Son, and, and 1 Corinthians 12 would be the gifts of the Spirit. But the question I'm asking is, still come from the triune Godhead, Oh, right? no, absolutely. Okay. But my point is with those nine gifts, okay. specifically it says, as the Spirit wills. But why would you want to separate that? What do you mean, why would it's I want to separate that? It's still a gift, that? dude. It's still a gift. Okay. It, it's, I, it's, I, it's, a, it's a gift. I think this is where we're differing. You're a pastor and a teacher. Okay. Jesus one, has, one's an office and one's a function. Right. G Jesus has called you to that okay okay that's that's that that's not coming and going absolutely the gifts of the spirit i if he chooses to manifest the gifts of healing or miracles through me i see what you're saying okay so we're I, there i, I see what you say you know what just came into my in my mind john piper who by the way is, is charismatic right that's the whole new calvinist with which whole, new Cal <laughs> no, no, no 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 okay this is where you got to school me Calvin, okay this is where you got to school yeah. me because because i've heard the term <laughs> wait i've heard the yeah. term hyper calvinism Error. I've heard the term Calvinism. Good. And I've heard the term New Calvinism. Error. So you're saying there's only Calvinism. That's it. Okay, but you 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 did tell me that the hyper Calvinists are the ones that don't that that, that don't even believe in like uh, 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 evangelizing and stuff, right? Right. That's okay. Right. And if I'm not mistaken, the New Calvinists lean. Oh, they want to evangelize everybody. They don't want to get nobody to say. They just want to be cool with everybody. Okay. Cool by yeah. Okay, that sounds like the emergent church. Pretty much that's what it is. Oh, okay, well, I didn't know that. Absolutely. I, I, specifically, I thought yeah. that the new Calvinists were simply those that were maybe leaning toward the gifts no, of the they, spirit. Well, the, it, it, it could be that too, but okay. it's mostly emergent. It's mostly emergent. Okay. So well, it's just kind well, of like well, an, well, that's a another, That's another monster. It's totally, itself. totally other thing. Okay. But I, I agree with you as far as this, and, and, and me and another brother was talking about this a couple weeks ago before I came here. Um, I was listening to a sermon by John Piper, mm -hmm. and uh, I love the man's preaching, love his passion for the truth and all that. Good brother. But he, Who, he, by the way, when you told me that he believes what he believes, I, I was shocked. So what does he believe? You're, you're, well, you're on camera, well, so why don't well, you? Well, yeah, no, you're right. But when you said that that he he <laughs> preaches, um, he preaches on the gifts. Yeah, he does. He and, believes in tongues. And he believes in tongues. In, I'm yes, like, he what? He, yes, he does. Are you serious? Yes, he believes in tongues. He believes in, and 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 he he believes also what you just mentioned. That's why I had to back up a little bit. Uh, but it's still in-house debate, but it's not salvific. Right. He believes that God can give that person the gift if he so chooses to give that. Right. Um, what, you, what, I was, what I was in my mind thinking about when you just talking about, you know, give, giving, giving, giving gifts as if he gives you this gift and then takes it from you 
as you know. Yeah, yeah. I, I don't. I don't. You know. I don't mean. But see, see, this is how I look at the gifts of the Spirit. As in, the Holy Spirit will choose. Absolutely. I'm gonna. I'm gonna use Seiko. I agree. But when you have people having a healing service, God says you you don't you don't presume on Him. You don't you don't you don't try to make Him do something that He hadn't promised that He's gonna do it for every single person. So when I'm when I'm hearing people saying oh, I'm having a healing service and we're gonna have it in two weeks. Mm -hmm. God says you don't tempt him like that. That's what that's what Satan did in, in, at, at, I, at the, in I, the wilderness. I, 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 I can see where you're going with that. But what about believers simply laying hands on the sick? I ain't got a problem with that. I, I, I believe God heals. I believe that. I even go as far as to say I believe uh, that God sometimes will heal just by my belief in faith. But it's, it's, it's subjective. I don't know, but I'm believing that he will. Can we go to the text? Sure. What's one? To my James? James. Oh, absolutely. One of my favorite verses, Doc. Yeah, and you told me that. <laughs> Which... Okay, okay. <laughs> Verse 13. Yes, sir. Is anyone among you suffering? Questions being asked. Yep. Let him pray. Is anyone cheerful? Sing praises. Questions, questions being asked. Yep. Let him sing psalms. All right. Is anyone among you sick? Yep. Okay. Let him call for the elders of the church. Yes. Let them pray over him. Yes. Anointing him with oil. Yes. In the name of the Lord. Yes. Okay, verse 15. Yes. And. Yes. The prayer of faith. Yep. So a faith prayer. Mm -hmm. No argument for me on that. But look at, look at what it says. I see it. Will. Will. Mm -hmm. And then it says, and the Lord will. Mm -hmm. Raise him up. Raise him up. So. But finish. Okay. And if he has committed <laughs> sins. Or, right, look. And if he has committed <laughs> sins. And then he'll, he'll be, be forgiven. forgiven. Right. What's your question? So my question is, if the Lord will. Can I, as a believer, stand on this? Can't, why can't I stand on Absolutely. this? Absolutely. I'm not, I'm, not, I'm not disagreeing with you on that. Okay. But does he do that for everybody? Well, he said he didn't, I, he I, did, I, yeah. he didn't establish, establish anything specific except among you sick. Do we, do we have accounts in the Bible where people have been sick and God did not heal? Wait, hold up. Because I know what you're talking about. <laughs> no, I do. I know what you're talking about. <laughs> but we, we, we honestly, can we say... You want to go to both? We, we can go to two. We, okay, like we, Epaphroditus was sick. You, now you say this. I'm just listening to you. Epaphroditus got healed. Was he sick? He was, he was sick. To the point of what? To the, to the point, point of, of death. death. Yeah, Yeah. he was sick. Okay. But he got healed. What about Timothy? Okay, now, now, now your other... See, what I'm saying is, Scripture doesn't say that he got healed. <laughs> Uh, no, 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 no. Here's what I'm saying. The scripture doesn't say okay. that he got healed, but we still don't know the, the specific circumstances of that. Like, how can we simply say that God just didn't heal him or didn't want him healed? M remember our agreement that we made a while back about the scripture? Oh, let's if, go if there, it then. says that. No, no, let's go okay, there. Go there. All right, all right, let's go there. Oh, wait, wait, let's go to Philippians 2 first. Okay, sure, sure. Let's, sure. let's go to Philippians 2 first. <laughs> all right. Okay. All right. What we got? We, we got um, Epaphroditus, right? Uh, is that we can start with twenty-five, right? Yep. Okay, twenty-five. Mm -hmm. All right, I'll read this one. You'll read the other one. Okay. Okay. okay, okay, okay. So yes, I considered it necessary to send you to Epaphroditus, my fellow, my brother, fellow mm -hmm. worker, and mm -hmm. fellow soldier, but your messenger and the one who ministered to my need, since he was longing for you all, yep. and was distressed mm -hmm. because you had heard that he was sick. Mm -hmm. For indeed he was sick almost unto death, but. God had mercy on him, and not only on him, but on me also, lest I mm -hmm. should have sorrow mm -hmm. upon sorrow. That's right. Okay. Epaphroditus, the scripture, we have three verses here that Absolutely. show us that he was sick and he didn't mm -hmm. stay sick. Mm -hmm. Now, first, is it First Timothy 5? 2 Timothy 4, 20. 2 Timothy 4, yeah, 20. Erastus remained at Corinth, but Trophimus I left sick at Miletus. Right. Okay. Yeah. That's the verse. Mm -hmm. So it says that he left him sick. Right. Paul well, did. Well, he was an apostle. But that's all we... I agree. That's all we know. I agree. I, 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 would, I would lean on the fact he left him sick. That's what the text says. He didn't, he didn't get it. He didn't heal him. Would you agree? He didn't. So, okay, so we don't know whether or not he got healed. We, but we do know this based on know. the text. He left him sick. Paul had the gift of healing. Paul healed all manner of diseases he, too. He frequently did. Absolutely. This is his friend. His boy. You're right. I mean, you cool. I'm not, I don't want to leave I don't leave you sick. You mean, look, if I got the gift of healing. Okay. So now, 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 now let's clarify something. Okay. Is there a difference between operating in the gift of healing and me just laying hands on you? C could there be a difference? Oh, yeah. I would say, I would say Okay. Yeah. And I would say the same thing. Yeah. Okay. Let's take, for example, <clears throat> the disciples. Matthew 17, right? Yep. 
the man brings his child yep. to the disciples. Yep. Now, Jesus had already given them authority to cast sure out did. demons. I preached on that two weeks ago. And these cats... Didn't do it. Couldn't did, do it. Couldn't do it. But scripture says that they couldn't do it, but why would, it, why, would, why would they think that they couldn't do it if he had given them the power to do it? Well, he, he kind of like gives them the answer to that question. He says, you're unbelief, right? Yeah. So I'm just saying, how do we And know? also like a prayer. So how do we know? That's all I'm saying is how do we know that this could not be a case of that as well? Well, because then that'd be speculation. Well, it is speculation. The only thing we know is that we he can't left speculate. Him. Okay, you can't. All we know is that he left him sick. Right. So you're making my point. Okay, but you're saying that that it was God's will, unashamedly, uh, undoubtedly, God's will you, to you, leave him you, sick. Would we agree, my brother, that Second Timothy chapter four, verse twenty, mm -hmm. says what it says? It says what it says. I'm okay. not. I'm not. I'm not refuting it. If we speculate, that's not inspired. Fair enough. If we assume. That's all it is. It's an assumption. That's all it is. We cannot make it a doctrinal treatise. Fair enough. Okay. So we have to say and we have to agree that Paul, who had the gift of healing, because we see that all through our scripture. We do. He did not heal his friend. That's why he says, I left him sick. I left him sick. Okay. Fair enough. Next point then. So, so then how, how would I then, you, Epaphroditus mm -hmm. gets healed. Okay. Trophimus is left sick. Can I get another one? Another what? Can you get another text? You're going to give me text of someone not getting healed. Yeah. I'm going to give you text of someone getting healed. But you, so where you, do we're, we... We're, 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 making, we're making the point then. Here's what I'm saying. I'm saying it's not God's will for everybody to be healed. But he is the healer. I would say amen. Has and a, he has heals a, has, has whoever a, he wants to heal. He has a covenant name. Yes, he does. Is his covenant name obligatory for every person that he heals or does not heal? In other words, can I demand that God heals me or can I say thy will be done? Well, you see, we use the word demand. I know a strong word. Ain't it's it? a strong word, but let's let's go with, OK, Mark eleven twenty four. whatever things you ask when you pray. OK, it's just whatever things. Now, we, common sense will tell us there's certain things we can't ask for. OK. But whatever things you ask when you pray, mm -hmm. believe you receive them. Uh, 1 John 5, 14 and 15. Oh, you're giving me my text, but go ahead and talk oh, to me. Oh, I am? Am I? Give it to well, me. let's come go on. there. No, come no, let's, let's, let's go there. Right then we're gonna, but you. then we're going to go to Mark 11, 24. Yeah, come on. And then we're going to go back to Matthew 9. Yeah, come on. Okay. Yes, sir. Yeah, let's, let's do this. We're going to hit this analogia scriptura up here. Let's go. Verse 14, right? Verse 14. You're going to read it or me read it? This Since is you the, brought it up, you read it. This is the confidence. Go ahead. Mm -hmm. Assurance. Yes. Fully convinced. Absolutely. That we have in him that if we ask anything according to his will. Mm. But isn't this his will? Mm. But isn't, the, are, are we holding his will? Mm. But aren't we holding his will? Mm. Aren't we holding his will? I would say, uh, yeah. We're but, holding but, his will. Uh, I'll let you finish the rest part. Okay. Go ahead. Go ahead. He hears us. <laughs> yes, he does. And if we know that he hears us, whatever we ask, we know that we have the petitions that we have asked of him. Right. What's your point? If this is his will and his will says... That Jesus took our infirmities. Yes, he did. That he healed all manner of diseases. Yes, he That he did. went about healing the sick and those who were oppressed of the devil. Uh-huh. It's in his will. Okay. That by his stripes we were healed. I mean, it's in his will. So For everybody? Why, why wouldn't it be for everybody? Because people get is sick it, and die. Is it possible that, I, that my doubt or my unbelief could be a hindrance to it? It could be possible, but that's not the, that's not the blanket for everybody. You, would you agree that there are... We just, we just said it earlier a minute ago. That there's people that got more faith than all of us in this room. Are we going to charge them for a lack of faith? So now we're being God. How do I know how much faith that person has? Only the person knows. So if this person says, I'm believing God for my healing, or I'm believing God to restore me, or I'm believing God to bring my husband or wife back. That's what we hear. He, but, okay, you just say about the dude, or you can go by what they said. That's, that's how we can go by. Okay, right. so I can't judge the person's heart. I'm going by what that person said. And, and this, person is, this person has been faithful to God. And God in his sovereignty does not give that child of his what he or she desires. Did God lie or does, does, does God have the right to do with his creation as he sees fit? You, you have insurance, do you not? I do. Okay. But you believe in healing. I do. You believe in miracles. I do. So do I. Right. Why do you have insurance? That's wisdom. Is that a lack of faith? No. Why not? Because. 
if I'm trusting God, why would I need insurance? Okay, but, but you got to think about what you're saying now. Okay. If it's God's will and he's going to do whatever he wants, why do I need insurance? I'm asking you that question. I'm just saying. So really, neither one of us know why we have it. I know I got insurance. No, we don't know why we have it. I do. Why do you have it? Because I, I need it. Why? Because I believe in but the... It, but insurance doesn't matter if, he, if, if God's will... Is going to be seen in your life, insurance mm -hmm. or no insurance. It don't matter what you have. If he don't if he if he doesn't will for you to be healed, as you stated. That, oh, thank you. <laughs> just, no, as you stated, <laughs> why would you need insurance? Because it's wisdom. Oh, okay. But 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 to be but but you said that it was wisdom. Ah, uh, but you can't use that one. That's mine. No, I said it first. You got it for no, me. No, 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 no. You, you, you trying to read my mind, bro. No, you got it you for me. You can't use that one. You just bought no, that no, for no. me. No, you can't. You, you can't I passed use... you the rock. Okay, that's what but I did. I'm, I'm dunking mine. I'm not passing the rock. Did so, I not so, pass you so, the rock? So, yeah, you gave it to me. Get assist. Get assist. We both say wisdom. Yeah. We're both asking each other. Uh huh. Why get life insurance? You're asking me. Health insurance. I'm mean, a health insurance. Yeah. You're asking me, and it's valid. If if it's God's will to heal all, what you need life insurance for? Right. But if God's going to do whatever He wants, and I believe you, it, why do you need life insurance? Why well, do see, either one of us see, need well, life see, insurance? See, here's, here's we're, both, we're, we're both idiots. <laughs> 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 Look. <laughs> I, I know and believe that God gives us wisdom, James 1, right? Indeed. But if... But he, and he does say, let him ask in faith with no doubting or wavering, right? Absolutely, bro. So you could, no argument on me that so, one, so could doubting? Because he says, let him ask in faith. Yeah, he said, let that man not even think that he get anything from the Lord if he doubting me. Okay, all right, man, okay. Man is, 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 is okay. on his way. All right, all right. So, okay. my question, sir, you ain't working off the chair on that one. Okay. Uh, yeah. Wisdom. Wisdom. If I'm on your side and I say... Is God's will for every believer to be healed? The logical question and, and conclusion for me, sir, would be, why do you need to have insurance of any kind? If I believe that by the stripes of, of Christ, I'm healed. That, that may not even be the best question to ask. And here's why, why I say that. Why? Because it, insurance mm -hmm. is going to lower the cost of a surgery that I, that I may need to have. But Jesus paid it all, so don't worry about it. I mean, he paid it all, right? I mean, paid in full. Okay, well, we're, we're, see, we're talking about healing. Yeah. We're, we're, we're talking about healing. So if really the question you should ask Okay, is, you want to tell me how to ask questions? Yeah, yeah, I want to tell you how to ask questions. Is if, if I believe that it's God's will uh -huh. to heal always, uh -huh. forget why do I have life insurance? Why, why, do I ever, why do I go see a doctor at all? Good question. Yeah. Uh, that's, could you answer that for me? Because, but see, if I go see a doctor, having insurance would be wisdom. That would be like a faith, too. No, I don't think so. Why not? I don't think so. For example, okay, I just need to go get a checkup. I mean, that's wisdom. Why? Jesus paid it all. You're real sarcastic, aren't you? Yeah, I love that sometimes. It works. Yeah. But answer the question. Okay. <laughs> wisdom. Why? It's wisdom. Why? If, Bible, if, if the, Bible, the Bible tells us to walk in wisdom and walk by faith. And I would say amen why, to the amen. Why, so why would I walk by faith and not walk in wisdom? That's my question I'm asking you. Could it not be presumption for me to say that is God's will for everybody to be healed, but yet I have health insurance? If I if I if I break a leg, cannot God heal that broken member of my body? Sure. So why would I go to a doctor and have them to put the cast in my arm and have to get deal with the itches in my arm for three or six weeks? So the question is valid for both of us. What's the question? It really is. Everything you're asking me. It's valid for you, too, because if God is going to do what he wants to do in any given situation, mm -hmm. why would you interfere with his will? Uh, are you saying that God is sovereign over healing? Why would you interfere with his will? I'm not interfering with his will. You are. I mean, because mm -hmm. if, if, if your leg, if, if your mm -hmm. leg breaks, that was his will. No, right. No. Isn't it? Yeah. But that's not. No, I'm doing that. No. If, if, if your leg is broken. Yeah. Was that the will of God? Yeah. Really? Absolutely. Yeah. I can't get with that. You know why I can't? But, but nevertheless. <laughs> <laughs> All right. So it's the okay. So fine. It's the will of God. Yeah. For your leg to break. Uh -huh. Why go try and fix it? Why get a cast? Why go to the doctor? You're interfering with the will of God. No, He's got a purpose in that. Absolutely. So why are you going to the doctor and letting the doctors interfere with God? Because will? he has given us as his own, as his own, the gift of medicine. You do believe in medicine. Right? I do. Okay. So if I break my leg. I don't like pain. I don't know about you. Maybe you some maybe you some. But isn't the pain the will of God? All of that is. So why are you interfering with it? Because if Jesus paid it all and He heals everybody at at, you know, at as He wills, 
No, I, I believe as he That's wills. That's what you believe. Yeah. But since you're saying he, you're, you're a king's kid, you are, you, 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 absolutely. You are, you are too. But I think I said on my Twitter, sometimes we had like spoiled brats sometimes. We, we think that because we're the king's kid, we just supposed to have whatever we want to have. And I know see, as... Don't, see, see, don't get the whole word of faith folk believe that you're not supposed to suffer or go through anything. I haven't really been hearing that much about you said, that. You said you haven't heard? Mm -mm, not too much. What haven't you heard a lot of? That God doesn't cause us to suffer. It cause us to be sick. See, I see. I have a belief. I be, see. I, be, I believe in suffering. I just have a different angle than well, you. Is do. suffering positive or is it negative? Uh, nothing. Nothing feels good about it. Okay, so is that a positive thing or is it negative? I believe it's a negative thing. Okay, so do I you... believe it's it's the effect of sin. I, amen. But like, do, is that does that feel good to suffer? Absolutely not. Okay, so it hurts. Yeah. Mentally, physically, spiritually. Yeah. It hurts. So if if you're suffering and it hurts, it's God's will. Yeah. He ordains all things. And he knows all things. Oh, yeah. Well, he better be. He, right. He better. Because he's omniscient. Absolutely. But for, he ordained, he, he ordained, for, for he ordained my leg that he broke if, I, if my leg was broken. Nah, he ordained, nah, I didn't. Yeah, he did. What about the devil? Does he, what does, about does, it? Does, can, can, does can the, I, you want me to go there now? Does the brother work for, for uh, does he do anything? Do you want me to go with that, that why question did, right now? Do you, why, 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 did, why did Jesus call him the ruler of this world? Twice. Why did Paul call him the God of this age? That's some bold statements. Why did he, why did he call man gods? I'm answering your question. I, I know. I think what you and I both do a good job of <laughs> is avoiding each other's questions. I'm not avoiding it. I'm, I'm answering your question. With questions. That's okay. what we're doing. You said, why did he that's call him the ruler of this world? I mean, I, Satan? Is, why did God call him the ruler? Because he called him that. Absolutely. That's what the Bible says. Called him the ruler of this because, world. Because ruler of this gave, world. A prince of this world system. He, he gave. Good old Adam. Yeah, thank you. He, gave, he, has, he has that authority. Under divine supervision. Does he, what about does, it? Does, can can, does, can I, you does, want me to go there now? Does the brother work for? for, for uh, does he do anything? Do you want me to go with that, that why question did, right now? Do you, why, why, why did why did Jesus call him the ruler of this world twice? Why did Paul call him the God of this age? That's some bold statements. Why did he Why did he call man gods? I'm answering your question. I, I know. I think what you and I both do a good job of. <laughs> Is avoiding each other's I'm questions. I'm not avoiding it. I'm, I'm answering your question. With questions. That's okay. what we're doing. You say, why did he That's call him the ruler of this world? I mean, I, Satan? Is, why did God call him the ruler? Because he called him that. Absolutely. That's what the Bible says. Call him the ruler of this because, world. Because ruler of this he world, gave, a prince of this world system. He, he gave. Good old Adam. Yeah, thank you. He, gave, he, has, he has that authority. Under divine supervision. Now, if you don't believe that. Yeah, I. I, I see, if you don't believe, see, if you don't see, believe see, that see, Satan is see. under the leash. Of an almighty God, that that dog, that dog Satan, can only go and only bark for as long as God lets him to. He's on a short leash, so, a very short so leash. So God, God's ordaining the devil's activity. He ordains all things that come to pass. Everything. All things, he ordained, good and he, bad, he, evil. He ordained the fall. He ordained evil. Yeah, I, I, just, he, I can't, he, I can't he, go he, with you that. He, I can show you in the scriptures. I, uh, really? Can you? That he ordained it? Because Romans 5.12, which we had a discussion about. Yeah. When are we going to finish anything? First, we, we, we were in Matthew 9, and I never even got it. Are you done with that yet? No. What you want on that? What you, what you, want, what you want to do on that? Can we go back to it? Okay, come on. Can we go back to okay. it? Okay. You, you... Listen, you need to understand that I'm loving this right now. I just need I, you to know I'm that. feeling it, too, because that's why I came out with it for the, for the weekend. Okay, the point I was, uh, let's, let's get to 26, okay. Matthew 9, 26. Okay. Okay, so, we're, oh, no, 27. Okay. All right, so then Jesus departs from there. Mm -hmm. Two blind men followed him, crying out and saying, Son of David, have mercy on us. And when he had come into the house, the blind men came to him, and Jesus said to them. Right. Jesus says to them. He said it loud and clear. Now, he's got all power. All of it. Why even bring this up? Why even ask this question? Why does my belief matter? Because he says, do you believe I'm able to do this? Why yeah. does that even matter? Are you asking me a question? I, I am. Now I'm asking you a question. <laughs> because if God... Is, is, is overtly, because I'm not knocking God's ability okay. to do anything. What you're knocking? Okay, what but I knocking? believe that he places his word above his ability. I believe, I believe, he, he, I believe he is integrity over talent. Do you have a chapter and verse for that one? Oh, that's, that's just a... I mean, I, no, that, 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 you're talking about God now. I mean, come that, on, you're going to give me a verse. My, he, is he not a God of his word? Oh, he, he, he said he established his word above his very name. Okay, so then if, if it's above his very name... But what does that mean? Okay, he says, do you believe that I'm able to do this? Yeah. Why would he ask me that? Why does it matter? It, it does matter. It does? Okay. So they said yes. 
Mm -hmm. And he touches their eyes and mm -hmm. he says, according to your faith. Yes, he did. Yes, he did. He didn't say according to my power, which we know he has. Mm -hmm. and, he didn't say according to what my father's able to do, which we know God can do all things. But why, 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 why my faith? Why is it according to my faith? I got a question. Why is it according to my faith? Because um, he gave, be it to you. Yeah, I agree. What's your point? Why, why, why my faith? Why is my faith even an issue? Why does it even matter? Why do I, why do I, why do I need faith to walk or live by if, if ultimately uh -huh. God is he's, he's ordained everything and that everything that ever happens, he intended it mm -hmm. like it was it was what he planned yeah. on happening. Yeah. Yeah, he did. He ordained he ordained us be with, oh, 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 oh I, I get it because it's a good thing we're we're talking. He only ordains the good stuff. He don't he don't ordain any bad stuff. That's what you're saying. <laughs> so you want this utopian guy? You want this you know sugar and cream guy? See that's that's see this is where we also differ. You believe God ordained the fall. I believe Adam was an idiot. So, but but that's where we're that's where we differ. God ordained Adam to be the idiot. Why would he do that? I don't know because he's God. Okay. I mean, so, 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 but the Bible tells us there are things that he can't do. The Bible can't lie. He can't lie. Yeah, that's it. Okay. The Bible does say. He didn't say he couldn't ordain the fall. But the Bible doesn't say he ordained the fall. He did. Where does it say that? What does the Bible say that he ordained the fall? Because the scripture says in Romans 5, 12, for by man yeah. came sin. You, you do, you do know, a prime, you know what primary and secondary causes is, right? Okay. You do. School, school, school me. What, what, <laughs> tell me what I'm missing from that verse. The primary cause. Tell me what I'm missing from the verse. The primary cause, God ordains it. Although secondary, he uses man or other means to accomplish his will. That's the primary and secondary cause. Okay. Nobody so, can refute that. So he, he's, he's, he's still covering it from all bases. What do you mean covering it? If God, you're saying God is ordaining something mm -hmm. and may use a man to 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 accomplish it you don't believe that oh okay i do believe that okay i'm talking about even even for evil i, I don't believe that can i show you a verse sure show isaiah 10. let's go to isaiah 10. the king of assyria king of assyria yeah all right now after i read this to you then can we go to daniel 6. oh absolutely i love daniel because i'm just because there's, there's an example of a king there that said he couldn't do something i agree Tomorrow, tomorrow, God couldn't do it, or no, the king couldn't do it. The king couldn't do it. I mean, where and and, and that was the Damn. Persian Empire. Every empire before that, the kings that. also said that there were things that they couldn't do. I agree because of their decree and their word. I agree. So they bound themselves to their word. I agree. Is it possible that God can bind Himself to His own word? And to do what? Uh, he to won't break. violate His word. I agree. He's not going to violate His word. Okay. Because of what you mean by Him not violating something? Violating His word, breaking His word. Pertaining to what? When does he ever violate his word? He never violates his word. We agree on that. But but you but we may disagree on the fact that what you're thinking he may be violating or what I may be thinking he is being called to violate. That's where the difference. So free will is an illusion. Free will ain't even in the Bible. Free will is not even taught in the Bible. Choose. What does choose mean? Who are you talking about? Israel. I mean, I said before you life and death. Israel. Blessings and curses. Are you going with Israel? I'm just saying. Well, why why are you telling them to Israel? choose life? You gonna pick up Israel? Really? Why is it? Why would it not be applicable at all at any oh given time? Oh my goodness! That had nothing to do with salvation. Fine. Okay. Nothing to do with salvation. Just oh. like it tells you not to repent. Do you have the power to repent on your own? Okay. When is God? I want to get to Isaiah ten. Let's go to Isaiah ten, verse five. Verse five. Woe to Assyria! This is this is God talking. Okay. Woe to Assyria! The rod of my anger. And the staff in whose hands is my indignation. I send it against a godless nation and commission it against the people of my fury to capture booty and to seize plunder and to trample them down like mud in the streets. Yet it does not so intend, nor does it plan so in its heart, but rather it is its purpose to destroy and to cut off many nations. Did, did you did you did you hear what he's saying? He just judged Assyria. Why? He says, what even in his plan? He wasn't even thinking about them. God says, I'm sending this. I'm sending you to do this. Verse, verse 12. So it will be when the Lord has completed all his work on Mount Zion and on Jerusalem, he will say, I will punish the fruit of the arrogant heart of the king of Assyria and the pomp of his haughtiness. For he has said by my power and my hand and by my wisdom, I did this for I have understanding. 
And I removed the boundaries of the peoples and plundered their treasuries. And like a mighty man, I brought down their inhabitants. And my hand reached to the riches of the peoples like a nest. And as one gathers abandoned eggs, I gathered all the earth. And there was not one that flapped his wing or opened his beak or chirped. Is the axe to boast over itself or the one who chops with it? Is the saw to wield itself over the one who wields it? That would be like a club wielding those who lift it or like a rod lifting him who is not wood. God says, this dude didn't even think about messing with these people. I sent him to do that. And then I'm going to judge him for doing what I sent him to do. Seems like to me, God can do whatever he wants to do with his creation and then hold him accountable for what he has done. Now, you do know that there, and this is not preached about often, and I asked you this before about the, the Hebrew tense. Sorry that, that there is the permissive and causative absolutely, tense. Absolutely. Which, which simply distinguishes the difference between what God overtly causes and what God allows. This was not permit. He caused this. Okay. He, the, text, the text even in the Hebrew says it in there. Verse 6 makes it even clear. I sent it. He didn't say I permit. You know, he says I. He said these are people. These, these are Syrians are the rod of my anger. I sent it. He said yet. Verse 7. It does not even intend, nor does it plan to do so in his heart. So now the question you got to ask yourself, does God at times do things that sometimes may look like, oh, that's messed up, Lord, God forbid, that you would do something like that, but then hold man responsible for doing what God decreed? I see Abimelech in Genesis. God restrained him from, from, from sleeping with Sarah. He says, I restrained you. You was getting ready to do it, but I restrained you. So where does free will come in? Nowhere are we talking about sovereignty. Can the thing form, say that to which it's formed it? Why did you make me like this? Does not the potter have the right over the clay? Okay. That mean, would, you, would you agree with that? Yeah. Does, I mean, the, text, does the text teach that? This scripture that you use teaches this, but we, we have scriptures that also show examples of something that God couldn't do. Like what? Oh, well, how about Jesus? Okay, what, what, what did Jesus couldn't do? Math, Mark 6, 5. The scripture says now he could do no, not should or wouldn't. It says he could do no mighty work there. Mm -hmm. Except that he laid his hands on a few sick people and healed them. And he marveled because of their unbelief. Why would the scripture say that he could not? And look up the word could in Greek, and it means just that. Absolutely. Ability. Which means he was not able to do a mighty work. Mm -hmm. How was he not able? That's, that's the easy answer to answer. Is it? Yeah. Okay. Tell me. Jesus Christ in his humanity limited himself to certain divine prerogatives so while he, he was on his earth. He limited himself. Philippians 2 says that. So this is why he could do no. Man, not, and man was responsible for his sin. So he says, okay, based on what, you, based on what you're doing, I, I can't do anything with you. I have no problem, I have no problem uh, agreeing with that. Okay. No, uh, were you looking for me to disagree with that one? I'm, I just want an explanation for why did, Jesus did, can't do something. Did that, did that help? But not, not in the I'm, sense that I'm, he's I'm, impotent. I'm just saying, why couldn't he do? He why would the scripture unbelief. say that? They're unbelief. So they're unbelief. Yeah. So, so unbelief on their part attributed to something that he couldn't do. Did not the boy's father say that to, to Jesus as well in chapter he 8, the said, same chapter? He said it to their disciples. He said, he said, Lord, I believe, but help thou mine unbelief. Same word that's used in chapter 8 is used in chapter 5. One is dealing with the, the so, Jews, so, so one we're, dealing with the boy's father. He says, I got the same unbelief that they got. He said, Lord, I, I, I believe, but I still got some unbelief in this thing. So, so we're agreeing that he couldn't do something. But he did it with the person that had unbelief in his heart with the boy's father. He did it then. Why? He says, help thou mine unbelief. Same word. So why would he do it with this one and couldn't do it with that one? Do you have an answer? Because Yeah, he's sovereign. And his purpose and his will is so not he, always in concert with what we so, think. So, he, so he, his sovereignty, if you're sovereign, mm -hmm. then there isn't anything you can't do. Right. It's what you won't do. But this doesn't say won't. It mm -hmm. didn't say shouldn't or didn't. And we're talking about said Jesus. He, said he could not. And we're talking about Jesus in his earthly ministry. I, I don't. I don't think that that should be any issue of contention. Because three chapters later, excuse me, uh, four chapters later, the boy's father goes to Jesus, 
And he says, do you believe I can do this? He says, well, I believe, but help thou mine unbelief. That's not 100% faith. And, 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 the, and the writer of Hebrews says, without faith, it is impossible to please him. Absolutely. But he didn't have full faith, and God still healed him. So let, let, why don't we go over there? In which one? Was that? That's Mark. Chapter 9. Yeah, Mark 9. Mark 9. Mm-hmm. Okay. Verse 24. Well, verse, verse uh, 22, he says, he, he gives a description. He says, and it is often thrown him both into the fire, into the water to destroy him. But if you can do anything, take pity on us and help us. And Jesus you know, gets kind of comical and says, if you can, all things are possible to him who believes. And immediately the boy's father cried out, began saying, I do believe. Help my unbelief. Do. He said, I believe. Help my unbelief. You got belief? And unbelief. That's doubt, is it not? Okay. See, now look at this. I'm just asking a question. You're not answering it, though. Is that not doubt? <clears throat> yeah, believe and unbelief. But why would you make a statement, I believe, and then say, help my because unbelief? Because this man is... This man so is, that means you started off with unbelief, but you're beginning to believe. But the fact is... He help ended, me he, believe. But he, he ends with unbelief. He says, help thou mine unbelief. I st Lord, I know you can. He says it. I, he says it right there. I know you can. But help me when he, I look at this boy. But it was based off of what Jesus said. Jesus said, if you can believe, and, and all had, things are possible. That means the man already had a, a, a measure or degree of unbelief. Okay. Now he's entering into belief. But it doesn't show that here. It just says that. Well, help, if it says, I believe, help my unbelief. I, absolutely. Because that, that, on the surface, that sentence makes no sense at all. According to who? It, just, it wouldn't make any logical sense to say that. Cool. I believe, help my unbelief. Why not? Why so there would have to be a reason of wh wh why he said it. He just told him. He is, he is, he is venturing toward the direction of belief. Is that speculation? Is that speculation? You can, it, all, that's what the text says. you can all speculate. Okay, so then what does that mean? What, it, tell it, me what it, it means then. Unbelief means unbelief. This is the same word it meant in chapter 4. I mean chapter 5. Lord, I believe. Yeah. Help my unbelief. Absolutely. What does that mean? He has doubt. Would there not be doubt? There's doubt and there's unbelief. So let's, let's stick with unbelief. Doubt is still unbelief. Well, okay, well, let, let's stick with the statement. Lord, I believe, help my unbelief. What does that mean? That he's doubting. No, he was doubting. He's beginning to believe. He says, Lord, I believe, help my present tense. Not past tense. Present tense in this text. I still have unbelief right now. I know you can. Because I'm when you that. go from unbelief to believe, it can be a progressive thing. I'm not disagreeing with that part. But the text doesn't say that. I'm saying what verse 24 in Mark 9 says. It says, I believe. I believe, Lord, you're able to do this. I believe you can do it. Help my present tense unbelief. And this is in the indicative mood. It's a fact. This man had unbelief. But he also believed. Absolutely. Don't you have doubts? Don't you, don't you, don't you have some time where you can think, or you believe that God can do, don't, is going to do something for you? And you're like, you know, it's right here. That's human. We're human beings. I, I appreciate that God allowed, uh, you know, the, the gospel writers to put this in here. That he shows us that there are different levels of belief and faith. And God even heals a person without any faith. No belief. Lazarus didn't have any faith. He called it man by name. The, the dead one? <laughs> Yeah, why would you have faith dead? You don't have anything. Right, you're making my point. That's a miracle. That was a miracle. You're making my point, Dustin. The scripture says miracles are as the spirit wills. But we're talking about Jesus. He's doing that. He's, he's healed, he healed the dude. Call him by name. That's particular. But, but, but we're that, talking, that's particular redemption right there, too. You but, that as a, but we're talking about a miracle. <laughs> Amen. I, I'm, I'm not disagreeing with that. That's not a healing. That's a miracle. A temporary suspension Praise God. of the laws of nature. Praise God. He still, so. he still heals the man. The man doesn't say, okay, oh, and he comes against his <laughs> free will. <laughs> he, how does he come against his free will? He didn't have any will. God called him out and told him to come. There is no will. There is no will at all. A dead yeah. man doesn't have a will. You understand that's what we are when we were, before we got saved, right? Before we got saved. Yeah, we, we were spiritually were, dead. We were spiritually dead. Hostile to a God. We hated God. Absolutely. Couldn't choose him if he wanted to. Alive to Satan. Couldn't that's, choose him if we wanted to either, right? <laughs> <laughs> Answer the question. You don't have any stumps. <laughs> let, let, me, let me tell you why. Why? Because does not Romans 10 tell us that how can they hear without a preacher? Yeah. Right. What does that mean? So in order for someone to come to the gospel, they have to hear the gospel. 
And what did that mean by hearing? They have to hear it. The mean, gospel's preached. Uh huh. I hear it. Scripture uh -huh. says faith comes by hearing. Okay, who gives you the faith? Faith comes from God. Okay, no, 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 nobody's arguing that. Saving faith, right? No, yeah, nobody's arguing that. Saving faith. Nobody's arguing that. Okay, so keep continue. Okay, so the message is preached. I hear the message. Holy Spirit convicts me. I respond. You're telling me somebody made me do that? Made you do what? Made me respond. Mm -hmm. You don't know who it was? Oh, t tell me. God did. Okay. No one can come to me, John 6, except the Father who sent me draws him. If the you, word draw, it means drag by force. If you confess with your mouth. But you got to be made alive first. You can't, Lord, you can't confess if you're not, if you're not if alive. If you confess yet. with your mouth the Lord Jesus. Yeah, but you got to be made alive first. Really? Because this is if you confess with your mouth the Lord Jesus and believe in your heart. You already said you got to be alive first. You will be saved. You, you got to be alive first. You just said that. You, you got to be made alive in order to confess anything. You're dead. Dead people don't talk. God uses a picture of death when he describes the unbeliever. In Ezekiel, Valley of Dry Bones. Okay. New birth, John 3, he makes the person alive through the Spirit. You had nothing to do with your birth. So how did you, how did you come here? Your mom and daddy hooked up, and then voila, here you are. You had no control over that. You had no say in that. You had no vote. You came out of the will of someone else outside of your control. Actually, even John 1 even says that. So the new birth, I have no control. Mm -mm. You didn't have control of your natural birth, did you? Come on. You're not going to get spooky on me, are you? So when I confess, you have to, you, you're gonna, you, you keep going on the, on no, the confess. No, but thing. you're going to have to help me out. Cause You're a corpse first before you confess. I confess. Yeah. Then the scripture says, and then once I become born again, I'm, I'm dead to sin. Right? That's, that's sanctification and justification. I'm yeah. dead to sin, right? Yeah. So yeah. dead to sin, alive to God? Absolutely. Okay. So when I was dead to God, I was alive to sin, right? Absolutely. You did what sin wanted you to do. You, sin was pimping you. I, yeah. I fed into the, into the flesh. Absolutely. That's all you can do. I, I just lived according to the that's flesh. All, that's all you ever could do. So my, my question is, you do understand that you had no control. You had no say in your salvation. Because if you did, according to Ephesians 2, 8, 9, you have reason to boast now. No, that's his works. That's works. That's deeds. For by grace are you saved. Right. Through faith. Right. And that not of yourself. Right. So the faith you even had, you didn't, you, didn't, you didn't get that on your own. God gave it to you. He gave you and I the faith to believe. Yeah. In, in him for yeah. salvation. I'm not doubting that. Okay, so you, you were dead. He made you alive through Jesus Christ. He put his spirit in you. He made you, and he says, I, I, the new covenant, even Jeremiah, he says, I will cause you to walk in my ways. The, the, the new covenant in Jeremiah 31 gives us the picture of the new birth. I will put my, I will. He didn't say, I might, or with your permission, if you don't mind, I'll, I'll put my spirit in there. He says, I will do this. If you're mine, if I elected you, if I called you, if I chose you, you're mine. You're, you, you're going to come to me because you're mine. So God chooses who to save and chooses who to damn. Yeah. He leaves, he leaves the non-elect to their own sinful choices. Because so, left, so, so ultimately, mm -hmm. God chooses mm -hmm. when they die, who's going to heaven. To my predestined? And, and who's not. To my predestination? Because if I'm not saved, if, if, I, if I rejected Jesus, mm -hmm. you're saying God intended for some to reject Jesus. It's all a part of the plan. He says in Romans 9, it's all a part of the plan. But it's interesting, he never said that, he, that eternal fire was prepared for man. Absolutely. It's prepared for the devil and his angels. I agree. They got to go somewhere. So, but the, so, but 2 so, Thessalonians so, do say, teach that. But according to that verse, every everlasting fire wasn't prepared for man. I so, agree. So explain to me what's man doing in hell. 2 Thessalonians and, 1 and, and, and God didn't prepare the place for them. Second Thessalonians 1 tells us that. Okay, what does it tell us? It tells them that they don't obey the gospel of God, that these will go away to everlasting torment. Everlasting torment, I know we like. I'm sorry, say that again? Everlasting torment. No, 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 no. You oh. said those what? Those who do not obey the gospel. So God intended for them not to obey? He ordained it. He ordained for them not to obey. According to the text, according to Romans 9. But I'm just reading you here why, why, why they go. 
verse 9. Well, well why did verse, verse God, six. according to what you're saying? According to what the scripture says. Verse 6 says, After all, it is only just for God to repay with affliction those who afflict you, and to give relief to you who are afflicted, and to us as well, when the Lord Jesus shall re be revealed from heaven with his angels, mighty angels rather, in flaming fire, dealing out retribution to those who do not know God. He's going to take vengeance on individuals that never had a chance in the first place. See, I think, I think the problem comes, we think that we deserve heaven. No, man deserves death and, and hell. hell. Okay, so why, that, why, that, why, that, why would that be a problem for you to accept that if God chooses to exercise his justice on sinful God-hating creatures like you and I were, but give grace and mercy to undeserved, undeserved sinful creatures like... Why? Because he's God. So he shows partiality. Because Peter said he doesn't. Why would God determine yeah. eternal damnation? Okay for some and eternity with him for others. I, and I'm going to do what you did, what you did with me. I think that's the wrong question to ask. Okay. I think the question we need to be asking is why would God choose to save any of us when all of us are worthy of his eternal wrath? And that takes us back to the fact that you believe and you say that the word backs it up that God ordained for our representative, our first one, to sin. Mm -hmm. He was in the plan. He ordained the plan. So God doesn't sin, but he mm -hmm. ordained a man to sin. He ordained sin. He ordained the fall. He ordained Lucifer to rebel. Wow. He did all of that because the scriptures, if he's not, if he's not sovereign, if, if he's you not. You say the scripture says that he ordained let me, let, let me give you. Let me give you some examples. He ordained Lucifer, let me and give he some, ordained Adam. Let me give some to fall. Let me give some examples. God is in control. His providence, His sovereignty rules over all creation. Okay, um, Psalm. Oh, not Psalm. Uh, Genesis fifty. Remember Genesis fifty. Joseph, his brothers, they messed over him pretty bad. He says, Joseph. Joseph told his brothers, "You intended this for evil." Now we we confuse it and say, "What well, the devil meant for evil." Devil ain't gonna do that, bro. He says, boys, my brothers, you, y'all, all y'all, which y'all intended for evil, you threw me in that pit, you sold me to the Midianites. What you intended for evil, God intended it for good. God takes the sinful choices in his ordained plan to show his power, his grace. He said it to Pharaoh. He said, for Pharaoh, this purpose I raised you up, Pharaoh. <laughs> the reason why I let your mom and daddy get together, because I raised you up to do my will and I'm going to judge you in I've, the process I've, of that. I've raised you up to take the fall. I've raised you up to fall. See, the only, the only thing about that, bro, is that... I'm, I mean, I'm just saying that. I, well, that, I mean, see, here's the thing. We, you, you think that we deserve a chance. I'm not saying we deserve a chance. Okay, so then why would it be hard to In accept? our sinful state, but we, 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 Adam wasn't created a sinner. Absolutely not. He was created perfect. Created perfect. And he made the free choice and the free will. No, he didn't. Yes, he did. Not according to what you no, no, what no. you're saying. No, 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 no. No, I, not according to what you're saying. Ordin, or, ordaining and choice is two different things that I don't want to get confused. Ordain, God, <laughs> so God can ordain something. Mm -hmm. Yep, he does it all the time. But think about what you just said. I, I, I heard myself loud and clear. I was here, I was here when I said it. Did you? Yep. So God ordains something, but still man. Holds man irresponsible. No, still man has to choose. Man, man. You just said Adam. That's yeah. what I said in Romans 5.12. Yeah. I'm not disagreeing with that part. I'm not disagreeing with that part at all. What I disagree with you on is that you're saying that man has the free will to make righteous choices apart from the saving power and divine purpose and sovereignty of God. No, they don't. No. I'm, I'm, Adam man. was born or created perfect. There was no sin in him. I agree with that. No problem with that one. His mistake causes us to be born into sin now. Amen. But you're saying God intended for that to happen. Mm -hmm. Okay. Well, the reason why I say that is because if it didn't, then who's sovereign? Man or God? Adam, um, I'm creating the beasts of the field and the birds of the air. Mm -hmm. But whatever you name them. Mm -hmm. But go back. 
He okay, gave them. A, he gave him authority to name the animals. Don't don't skip the text. He oh, gave no. he gave Adam authority to name the animals. He gave him authority. Right. Right. Okay. So God gave him authority. It wasn't like God could do it himself. I'm not saying that he okay, couldn't okay. do it himself. Okay. Whew. Go ahead. No, continue. But I'm saying <laughs> he tells Adam whatever you name him, that's going to be their name. What's wrong with that? But who 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 actually named him? What do you mean? Who actually named him? Adam? Named the animals. He did. The Bible says he did. I don't want to go beyond what the text says. Uh, no, but, but my point is, if God's ordained everything mm -hmm. and Adam named those animals, was it Adam naming the animals? Or were those the names that God intended or ordained? Through the means? Through the means? Yes. Okay. But Adam was the one who named the animals and gave the animals. It wasn't like God would say, oh, oh, you want to name him an elephant? I, I wanted to kind of name him a giraffe. No. Whatever the Bible said the animals were named by Adam, that was their name. God gave Adam the ability and the intellectual capacity. Creativity. To name these animals. Yeah. So I don't think we're arguing against that part, right? So, so the question I'm asking is, what is the problem with ordaining stuff? We, 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 we do it pretty much all the time. Now, how can we get sinful creatures can do something and have control over things, but God can't have control over nothing that he made? Nobody's saying that he's not having control over anything. Well, he needs our permission to do anything. Made. No, I'm, no I'm, we're not even t talking about a permission kind of thing. Okay. We're, 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 we're talking about, you're saying God has ordained everything across the board. So that means free will. I'm, forget the fact that the Bible doesn't use the word. <laughs> it don't exist. Well, free to do what? To make a choice. Of what? Any kind of choice. So, so let me make sure, make sure I understand what you're saying. You're, you're telling me that prior to a person being saved, right? Is that what you're saying? Prior to a person, Joe Blow sinner, Joe Blow God hater, who has not placed his faith and trust in Jesus Christ, right. has the power to choose God on his own? He's, gonna, he's not going to choose God on his own unless he hears a message. That's fine. Does okay. he have the power in and of himself? To hear the message of the gospel and get saved. When the gospel's preached, there will be conviction. Faith will come who for brings, what was heard. Who brings, I thought the Holy Spirit brought that. Faithful, Holy Spirit convicts, absolutely. Okay. How? So when the Holy Spirit, and there are those, did, did, did not, uh, Acts 13, did not uh, Paul say, talking to the Jews, mm -hmm. he said, because you have rejected the way. You deem yourself unworthy of eternal life. Therefore, we go to the to Gentiles. Gentiles. You want to read down to verse 48? We, we, we can do that. Acts 13, 48 says, And those who are appointed unto eternal life believe. The word appointed is there. He says, appointed unto eternal life. Who appointed them to eternal life? They did? Or did God? Why wouldn't you think, why wouldn't you believe that God has appointed all and desires all for eternal life? Because the text doesn't say that. But first... Timothy 2 says it. Oh, my goodness. That's, not, that's the wrong one. Is it the wrong one? Yeah. Well, tell me why it is. Because it don't mean that. The okay. word desire, that word desire and all, you know, all don't mean all, right? I mean, I'm looking at it here. Whosoever, whole, whatsoever. Whosoever is not in the Greek text. I'm just saying what the word means. Mm, but that's not the word. That's used. So what's the word? Sum of all types. It's not everybody. That's just like, just that's like not, that's not here in this Greek definition. But okay. No, no, that, that's not the that's not the that's not the grammar of the Greek text. I can pull my logos out and show you to you, but it's not. That's not what it says there. Uh, who, whosoever, even John three sixteen is the. That's what we translators man added to John three sixteen. It doesn't teach that. It doesn't. No, whosoever not even in the Greek text at all. It's the ones believing. So it doesn't say all. It doesn't mean all. In First yeah. Timothy 2? And then verse 5, for there is one God and one mediator between God and men, yeah. man, Christ Jesus, who gave himself a ransom for, for all. all. And it's not everybody, though. That's it's my not, point. Every, all don't mean every single person. So you're, saying, so you're saying that Christ died for Hitler. Christ died for Saddam Hussein. Christ died for Idi Amin. Christ died for all these people that have now died. You're saying that they... they, they there was no hope for them being saved. No, 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 I'm not saying. What I'm saying is, is that God did not choose everybody for salvation. He made it clear to that. The text makes it clear. He says, Esau, I love. I mean, Jacob, I love. Esau, I hate it. He says, before the twins were even born, before they did anything good or bad, God chose Jacob. So. He chose him. And you take that word hate. 
to well, me. How, how would you it, take it? It's, 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 to not like a lot? So God hates a person? He hates the sinner. That's what the Bible says. He hates the wicked. And does not God have the right to have a perfect hatred? See, the Bible, Absolutely. The Bible the, says these six things the Lord hates. Okay, so, not, so, 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 so we agree on the hatred thing, that God has the right to hate. But it's interesting that, that it didn't, he didn't say these six people I hate. He didn't say I hate the liar, he said I hate the lying tongue. He says he had the wicked. In Psalms, he says he has the wicked. Okay. So he even said he even creates the wicked for the day of destruction. Now. And, and, and we are, mind you, we're arguing over, I'm sorry, not arguing. Yeah. We are conversing yeah. over an English version. Of what? Of a version. Of what? Talking about the Bible? Yeah. I'm, I'm, I'm trying to give you what the text says, even in the original language. It's not, it's not, it, doesn't, it doesn't say every single person in John 3.16. It doesn't say everything, every single person in 1 Timothy 2, 1 through 5. It doesn't say that. He qualifies. He says, I want you to pray for all kings in authority. All kinds of kings in authority. We're to pray for all men. We're to pray. Yes. Governor, he, and he qualifies to all governors, all that kind of stuff. He, he tells us that. But he doesn't, he doesn't say that he, that he the, the, the Bible doesn't teach that Christ died for every single person. You know how I know that? Because John 17, his high priestly prayer says, I'm not praying for the world. I'm praying for those you sent me. Paul says in Ephesians 5, 25. But, 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 but you're the world until you're in Christ. You can't use that as an argument because Jesus himself said it. I'm not praying from, for the world, Father. I'm praying for those that you gave me out of the world. Those are mine, he says. That, I'm praying for those, he says in Ephesians 5, 25. You're saying that everyone can't come out of the world. No, no, no. I'm saying everybody can't come out of the world unless God brings them out of the world. It's sovereign election. God is the one who draws. If left to ourselves, we would never come. We would never come. I mean, I, I mean I've, never heard, <laughs> I've never heard someone say what you said regarding, like, the fall okay. and, and Lucifer's rebellion. Okay. I wasn't raised in a church that taught that. Okay. So... So when I, just like you would question yep. um, somebody making a statement, mm -hmm. you know, from the whole concept of, of God gave authority to Adam and then Adam disobeyed and he gave it over to Satan, et cetera, right, et cetera. Right. So, so someone like yourself that would have a problem or a concern or your radar would go up when mm -hmm. you would hear a statement like that, mm -hmm. God needs permission or, 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 or God needs to be invited, et cetera, et cetera, anything yeah, synonymous right, exactly. with, yep. with that. Yep. And that's like foreign to you. So what you're saying is foreign to me to, to, okay. to, to, to say that God ordained the fall, you know, or, okay. or God ordained Lucifer mistake, his rebellion. Okay. Okay. I mean, that questions that would question everything that I've literally ever believed in, because then I would have to ask myself, do, do I have a say in anything or have I ever said it, mm -hmm. had a say in anything? Right. Uh, was my choosing or, or my confessing, whatever I've ever said, was that of my own accord? Mm -hmm. Or was I compelled to do it? Was I right. was I was some, th something or someone controlling me that I just was not aware of? Okay. So that is what that statement would be rooted in. I and the whole concept of simply put, God creates man mm -hmm. and says, "Man, I give you authority mm -hmm. to rule over my creation." It's right. God's creation. Right. He says, "Adam, you're the vice regent. You're the mm -hmm. you're the you're, right. the you're the steward or exactly. caretaker exactly. of the creation." Exactly. Okay. I'm here, I'm going to create some animals. Adam, what do you name them? I, I put creative ability in you. Absolutely. So, okay. So he tells Adam, all right, here's the garden. Tend it, keep it. Mm -hmm. You take care of it. You, you hedge about, mm -hmm. you protect it. Um, don't eat from that tree though. Right. Don't do it. Right. You know, if you do it, meaning I desire, I'm commanding you not to do it. Right. But if you do it, here's the end result. Exactly. Okay. So all I see there is free will, you know? <laughs> you, you, you and, I, and I would agree you, with you on that part. Absolutely. You understand what I'm saying? Absolutely. So, so Absolutely. now Adam, dude, you're about to disobey God, so you, 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 you eat the fruit. Right. And then the Bible says that you'll surely die. So, of course, he, he spiritual death or separation Absolutely. begins to die progressively. Right. Right. You know, he lived to be 930, but nevertheless, yeah. he died. Absolutely. Okay? And so then he handed that, that authority that God had given him, he handed it over to Satan because, right. of course, Satan takes Jesus up on the hill mm -hmm. and says, look at all the kingdoms of the world. They had been delivered to me. Absolutely. Okay, so w when you analyze all that, mm -hmm. at least from our angle, it's, there seems to be a, a measure of, of God has a will and a desire, mm -hmm. but doesn't overexert or force it on his creation, but mm -hmm. desires his creation to, to desire him or, or, or want to serve him as opposed to, mm -hmm. in a sense, making mm -hmm. them serve him. I understand. So that's, that's just the angle. So you hear a statement like that, which would cause you concern. 
But man, if I was, if I wasn't who I was, or if I was just a, a, a believer and I, and I walked into your church or I walked into, you know, if John MacArthur or John Piper right. also preached that mm -hmm. and, and they said God ordained the fall, I'd be like, what, what the heck is this? <laughs> What, what, right. what is this? Right. Strange me. Do you understand why I'm asking the question, not, not sure. to try to attack anybody? No, no, I understand. Um, um, because, you know, like when you came on my broadcast, when they see you, people are going to make their comments or make their accusations or attacks because of, of your dad. Um, I, you know, for me personally, I, I think there, there's been some things that your dad has said that have been problematic, but I want to have the opportunity to speak with him myself because sure. I don't want to prejudge anybody. I, I yeah. just think that, you know, for the most part, if, if people would just be willing to try to sit down and talk, because I can read a sermon and, and say, okay, okay, you said this, do you, you know, do you, you said this, you said this, you know, um, you and I were talking about the spiritual death of Christ. <laughs> Dude, when I told you that MacArthur said, about the spiritual, you, you didn't even know. You, you, you was like, wait a minute, hold up, dude. I wanted to go. You, you see what I'm saying? I wanted to go. I, I, I can't word it as you can see. So that's so, so. Because I've never heard that. Because right. all I've ever heard is, 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 is anti right. spiritual death. To hear a prominent figure <laughs> like John MacArthur? Right. Are you serious? Right. Say that as. Wow. And what he said was, for those maybe trying to figure out what they, what they said, you may be leaning on your, on your chair is that there was a spiritual death that occurred on that cross. The difference comes, and I think you and I were discussing it and, right. and trying to you know, you know, build on it some more, was that Christ did not suffer in hell, as, as Word of Faith uh, prominently teaches or predominantly teaches, from what we've studied. Right. Um, right. And, I, and I told you why I believed it. Absolutely. I did not have a scripture. Exactly. And, and I couldn't refute what you said because right. there was no clear scripture right. that said it. I based it on two scriptures. Exactly. Neither exactly. one blatantly said what it is I believe. Right. But, you know, I, I, I pieced two things together. Right. And, and you know. And, and that's the difference, I think, yeah. that where, you know, uh, when we talk about Christ and when we talk, we, we, just when we talk about what the Bible says, you know, you, you know I think you're telling the sister that I can have a belief about something. But if I make that a doctrine and, and just push it as this is what it says, I think that's where the, the divide even comes even of a greater wedge. And even much greater when people don't want to sit down yeah, and talk. I, 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 I give you, I give you an illustration like this. You know, it's like when you see something, if you have the, the idea and concept that God shows no favoritism yeah. or shows no partiality right. in regards to anything, and then you experience something in your life personally, you're like, wow, if God did it for me, mm -hmm. why wouldn't he do it for everyone else? I understand that. So, so part of, let's say, my father's belief in reference to that healing's been provided for all or, mm -hmm. or prosperity has been provided for all, I mean, man, they... He and my, and my mom have both faced life-threatening situations. Mm -hmm. And they prayed that prayer of faith that we read in John, mm -hmm. I mean, in James 5, mm -hmm. 15. They you know, prayed the prayer of faith and, and got results, mm -hmm. you know? I mean, you know, we can ask the question why, but if you, if you, if you base it on the school that I come out of, right. well, they went to the Father in faith, yeah. you know? And, and, and why would God heal? I mean, he, healed my, he healed my mom and my dad. Numerous. Again. My mom had life-threatening cancer. My, my dad right. just had a life-threatening kidney situation right. that right. he came out of. It's like, right. why would, why would God continue to show Himself to them mm -hmm. in that manner mm -hmm. as Jehovah Rapha, the Lord your healer? Right. And my father not think. I mean, when it, when he, when he experienced his first healing, his mindset is, wow, if God could heal me, right? Why wouldn't God heal everyone else? Right. You know. And, I, and I, 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 here's what I, I want to make sure that people understand that I'm saying. I'm not discounting healing. I'm not discounting. I, and, I know, and I know you're not. You, you know I know saying? you're not. Uh, I encourage people and even, even you know, uh, tell people to stand on God's word, stand in faith, you know, believe that God can. Even, I even go sometimes go as far as to believe that he will because I believe sometimes that God will give that person in that subjective situation that confidence or that assurance that you, can't, you and I can't describe that this person has this overwhelming assurance that God is going to do that. I've had those experiences in my life, you know, uh, where God has given me this overwhelming peace that I could not explain and confident that he's going to do something and he did it. You know what I'm saying? But I, 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 can't, I can't just say that he's going to do it for every single person because even with our own children, I don't give my kids the same responsibilities or the same types of, 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 of privileges because it depends on where I, they are and as, the, as their dad, I know what's best for them. So when I see God, I see God as our father. And at but, the, you know, and, and, and I think this is where the, it's like the, the back and forth consistently yeah. goes. 
But at the same time, as a father, you want what's best. Absolutely. For all your kids. Absolutely. Even if they don't get the same thing. Absolutely. You still want what's best. But we also lay our kids on that. You know, we, when we take our kids to the doctor and we know they're going to get a shot, we know it's going to hurt. Indeed. We, 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 we ordain that to happen. <laughs> if they're gonna, we, we have planned it. We talked to the doctors. We called them and found out you know, what time is the appointment. Our kid had no clue that they're going to get their legs stuck or their arms stuck uh, or get their teeth pulled. They, they had no idea. But we take them to somebody that we trust is not going to intentionally hurt them, but is going to better help them. And sometimes it's pain, suffering, trials. The Bible says, James said, it builds our faith. Um, so I, even even with your dad's situation and, 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 your, and your mother, I think your mother had, she had what, chemo too? She had, yeah. Yeah. So all of that is God's way of bringing and providing uh, uh, healing. And I, I would want to encourage people as well with that too, that, hey, I'm not doubting that God can't. I don't want to doubt anything that God can do. I, I don't want to give people false assurance in saying that he's going to do it every single time because that may not be the case. He didn't do it for Jesus in the garden. But his priesthood says, not my will, but thy will be done. And his own humanity, Christ said, look, Father, if it's possible, let this yeah, cup pass let this from me. Pass. No you know doubt. what I'm saying? But he says, nevertheless, let your will be done. And that, that's, that's all I'm saying. And I, 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 look, man, I appreciate the opportunity. And, the, and the, the, the fact that we're sitting here. Appreciate you, man. Yes, sir, man. Thank you. Thank you, bro. Appreciate it much. Yeah.